Hey guys, this is Juniper Gaming, and I'm Josh K, bringing you the week four post week show. And uh, sorry if you wanted to commentate with me, but I have pre recorded these episodes beforehand, so we could get back to you on that. But for now, it's going to be me and Josh. Say hello, Josh. Hey guys, I'm back again after the post week show for week three. And uh, we thought it was a, I thought it was a big success, so we're gonna try it again here. Yeah, so, um, as Josh said, sorry if, uh, because we are actually recording this pretty much within an hour of the post-week show for week three. We're just trying to get ahead of ourselves so we don't delay any more weeks. Though, the closer to the summer, and even during the summer especially, we'll definitely have a lot more guest appearances, especially with the playoffs. We can even just have just regular talks, like talk shows, I guess you could call it, just talking about the JFL generally coming up to the playoffs and important times in the JFL. So sorry if we did not get to you. Um, we obviously did not, but like we said, we're recording this all in one shot in one night, so, um, I mean, week four isn't coming out for two weeks by the time that this is recorded, so we really apologize, though. With that, let's get into the actual post-week show. Sorry if you just heard a little notification, though. Let's get into this. Okay, so here we have the Spies and Blazers. The Spies lost away, and the Blazers took it 27-17, and here we see uh, another loss for the Condor. Yeah, very disappointing. I mean, the Condors, I mean, really just not too much good stuff coming out of the season. I mean, they're not even really putting up too much of a fight. Week 1 and Week 3, they didn't even score any points. And here, just a mere field goal that was only put into this game and really just a dismal season for them, not really showing much improvement. Hopefully, I mean, they should be able to get some good draft picks after a bad season from last season, and hopefully they can maybe get some good picks out of that. And it doesn't help that they do have a fair share of injuries also. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah, as you notice right there, you see Brandon Zieger still is yet to get a touchdown pass. I wonder if he threw any more interceptions in this game. Uh, we'll probably see when we check the league leaders. He's probably still in the lead for that. Yeah, I'm sure that they, uh, they'll they definitely be looking for a quarterback in this upcoming draft. I mean, Ziegler or whatever his name is, can't really, don't know exactly. But, uh, I mean, no touchdowns, bunch of interceptions, leading the league in them, in fact. Um, pretty sure at least, definitely disappointing season for him, only in week four. Yep, uh, it doesn't look like any more great, great things will come for the Condor, but we'll move past them, and we'll go to the Demons and Stars, which, uh, you guys saw, and you saw how that turned out. Yeah, 38-17, to 17, and, uh, another thing about this, uh, the pre-recorded episode, um, well, not pre-recorded, though, um, we don't know who wrote articles for this yet, so we may have a good turnout, we might have a bad turnout, so I don't know if Two Clutches is going to write an article for this or not, though uh, we do not know as of this point in time, so just thank you to anyone who did write an article. Sorry uh, we don't know who wrote an article yet, because you guys are writing it in a week from the time this is being recorded, but um, thank you to anyone who did write an article. 38-17, to 17, dominating win for the Demons away. Stars, as you heard in the pregame show, they are a 67 overall. And the Demons, 86 overall. Demons also not fighting many injuries. The Stars, on the other hand, they are just not a good team to start off with, and they do have some key injuries that are not helping them. Yeah, definitely. If you saw on the uh, player rolls, you saw a few injury prones there for the Stars, so that doesn't help them out a lot. And uh, speaking of, um, I don't know, bad games, I guess, <laughs> you see the Cherokees here uh, playing a little bit like the Condor, if I, if I could say that. They uh, scored uh, zero points. Yeah, the Cherokees, I thought that this was going to be a good game. It was one, definitely one of our choices for the game of the week, though the Warriors really just blew them out. We know that the Warriors are a very good team. I thought the Cherokees were pretty good, though uh, they really did not show much in this game. Not good defense or offense for that matter. Mm -hmm. They really got to reassess and uh, hop back in into Week 5. They just got to shake it off their shoulders and uh, keep going. And the uh, Warriors continuing their hot streak, as Josh mentioned before. Kadarius uh, Sanchez, or whatever his name is, you know, He's probably did good in this game, I'm assuming, by the high scoring. Uh, so, uh, good for them. And now you see the Lions, they actually lost uh, to the Atomic 21-27. to And uh, I myself am a little bit surprised uh, for the Lions. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, the Atomic, I believe, going into this game, they were 0-3. The Lions, as I mentioned in last post-week show, the Lions were 2-1. Though, really, they, that one loss was against the very good Wave team. And, I mean, they, were, they only lost by a field goal. This game, this really just sets them back a lot. Now they're all the way back at 500, and I know all the way back, I know. I mean, seriously, though, I mean, this terrible loss against the Atomic. Not a great team. Definitely should have been an easy win, though. They lose this one by six. 
Yep, uh, pretty upsetting for the Lions. Uh, but moving on to this is Josh's favorite team. Uh, Junipers won at home, 16-13. to 13. Looks like they won by a field goal, and I'll check this out for you, Josh. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, definitely good to bounce back after winning that first game in Week 1, then losing two in a row. You like to see this, and it looks like they really revitalized in the fourth quarter. Not too much action in the second and third for them. Two field goals, you see, though the fourth quarter, you can see that's pretty much where they bolted out. And they really just took the lead, and I'm sure that that uh, pretty much energized the home uh, the home fans there. And that's pretty much how they got their win there, so good win for them. Now, um, I think they're 500, 2-2, two two, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if you look there, you see uh, Jay Zignetti there, who threw a touchdown pass to uh, Cameron Holmes, I believe his name is. Well, That was probably a very key play in this game. Without that, I mean... They're back at one and three, I bet you. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm also um, very surprised with this because he's not the starting quarterback, as you know. You saw in the first week, Connor Singer is, so it looks like he got hurt in this game, and Zignetti really stepped it up to uh, help his team in the victory. Definitely. Mhm. Mm and there you see Dylan West uh, kick the forty-nine yard field goal, not a cupcake field goal, not definitely not an easy field goal to make, and he made it with one forty-three left, which gave them the win. Probably an exciting game to watch down to the line, especially with the home game. I'm sure the fans there are pretty happy, uh, including me. <laughs> yep, definitely uh, good for the fans. And there you see the fans are probably also happy that their rivals, the Killer Bees, lost to the Crocodiles 6-17. to You're probably happy about that, right, Josh? Yeah, the Killer Bees, one of the rivals of the Juniper, same division. And that is a tough uh, loss to bite for Orleans Operator. That's his uh, team that he roots for. So uh, bad loss for him. Only two field goals, it seems. And the Crocodiles, I believe they're an average team. And the Killer Bees, they have the potential. They just have to show it this season. And I would say this is definitely a make-or-break season. If I'm right, they had a pretty uh, pretty good season last year. Mm -hmm. So probably not many great draft picks this season. So if they don't do good this season, I would say it's a make-or-break season. And it looks like the Junipers are starting to pick up some speed after, I believe they were 7-9 and nine last year. They were 7-9 and nine last year. And uh, they definitely revamped their team in the offseason. So the Junipers are willing to fight for a playoff spot with their rivals, the uh, Killer Bees. So we'll move on from that game and we'll go to the Sky Rays and the Vipers. The Vipers lost again. I believe they still yet to have a win as they lost uh, at home 13-16 to 16 in a very close game. And here you see Nobles, uh, they beat the Solemn Boars, who were 3-0 and going into this week, I believe, but now they're 3-1. and Yeah, really, I gotta say, terrible loss for the Boars for one reason. This Nobles team lost to the Wave, although they are a very good team, 48-3. to So now you're coming into this game 3-0, and you think that this would be pretty much a cakewalk. I think he even said, Josh, that, you know, this is pretty almost a guaranteed win. The Boars, 3-0, and and then the Nobles, I think they were 0-3, either that or 1-2, and, and they just had that devastating loss, really. And they're at home, too. Really just a terrible loss. Probably one of the worst ones in this week, if not the worst. Uh, yeah, definitely a bad loss for them, and also you got to remember the Cherokees didn't score anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, but, I mean, the uh, the Cherokees were facing off against a really good team, and they were 2-1. and one. These This is really definitely... It may not seem it in a t uh, 27 to 21 score, though it's definitely much worse than it shows in the stats. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the uh, Boar's uh, players definitely a little upset with that, as well as the head coach. I don't remember his name right now, but you can look it up on the website. Uh, so definitely not good for the Boar's. But now we'll move on to the Wave, and they yet won again, 34 to 7, and they are still undefeated. Yes, I'm happy for HGT son. One, two, three, one of our definitely most loyal fans that we've had. And it turns out that the team that he picked was definitely one of the best ones um, right now. And the Wave Roll is a pretty good team, though. I have a feeling that this is definitely the season that they're going to break out. You see right now, starting off 4-0, and and I really feel like what really gave them a jolt of energy was in that Week 2 game of the week. It was 2020 going into overtime. I believe it was overtime. And they scored that field goal, and I really feel like that gave them a jolt of energy. From there, beating a good Lions team. Lions have definitely fallen off a little bit since then, though a good win for the Wave. Travelers, not one of the better teams, I wouldn't think, though definitely pulling off some good games here um, up to Week 4. Mm -hmm. And the Wave, uh, it's funny, they're going to have to 
actually face the uh, Warriors. They're in the same uh, conference, so the Wave are going to have to face the Warriors if they both make it to the NFC Championship game. That'll and be a good one to watch. That'll definitely be interesting to watch. Uh, you know, But that's way down the line. We don't know what's going to happen from this point on. But we'll move on here to the Meteors, who uh, pretty much crushed the Anaconda, who uh, I believe are on a two-game losing streak right now, 34-13. to And they're the Pioneers... Uh, they lost uh, 10 to 19. Flame took them over, and that's not much of a shock to me. Yeah. If if I'm right, that means that the Pioneers, they have lost 18, no, uh, 19 of their last 20 games. They were on 16 last year, and now they're 1 and 3. That one win, I mean, yeah, it's good and everything, though. 1 and 18, I mean, uh, 1 and 19, that is. I mean, and then you go back to the season before, I, I think that they were a decent team. Though they've really just fallen off, and now they're they're like the Astros of football, really. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a great comparison there. I'd say so. The only thing uh, that is great to looking for, I guess, is the draft. If I was a Pioneers fan, this is me personally, I would root for them to lose because I want them to get a great draft pick. But you know, that's just me personally. I don't know what you Pioneer fans out there, if there are any, <laughs> uh, think yeah. about that. But now we'll move on here. The Pitbulls uh, beat the Rhinos 24-17. And if you hear a car <laughs> in the background, uh, we can't do anything about that. Yeah, there's just an alarm going off. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know if the microphone's picking that up, but uh, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have the Shamrocks and the Bulldogs. Seems like a pretty close game. Four-point uh, game there. Shamrocks beat the Bulldogs at home 21-17. And that's actually the last game of the week there. So now we will take a look at the Week 5 games following a pretty exciting Week 4. And this first game, we have the 1-3 and three Anaconda trying to bounce back after a couple pretty hard luck losses facing off against the home team, the Buffaloes 500 team, trying to get above that 500 mark. That will be pretty good for them. Definitely not known to be one of the better teams, though definitely a matchup to look out for. Mm -hmm. And here we have Rhinos and uh, Sky Rays here. Sky Rays have a decent record, and the Rhinos uh, don't which is surprising because... They did beat the Junipers 44-34 to in that one game. Yes, and they also have uh, Rajan Simpson, I believe his name is. He is the league leader in uh, passing yards. A good receiver for the Rhinos, if I remember correctly. We'll look at that later on. But Just uh, uh, just a note about that game, because uh, I was never... Uh, I wasn't too aware of the Sky Rays, but I would consider them a sleeper team in this league right now. I mean, the Sky Rays, we haven't drawn too much attention to them, though they're 3-1. and one. If they can win this game against a 1-3 and three Rhinos team, they could definitely sneak into the playoffs if they keep this rate up. Uh, definitely. I don't remember what division they're in right now. We'll look at that when we look at the standings, but if I remember correctly, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the hardest division, I don't think, and they don't have the easiest. This is an average uh, division. So uh, here, the Killer Bees and the Baboons are facing off 2-2. Two and two. At one and two. Yeah, watch out for that one double O. See if you can get over five hundred there against a one and two baboons team, and their one win. Remember that was against the dismal <laughs> Condor team. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if I count that as a win. I mean, I, it is a win, but you know the Condor. <laughs> Sorry, don't, yeah. don't go that far. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I don't mean to be mean or anything, but you know how the Condor. Are. Okay, so moving on from that, Blazers Cherokees, uh, three and one against two and two. And the uh, flame taking on the condors that we were just speaking for, and that's a ugly, ugly ra uh, record. Yeah, record. That's what I meant for the uh, condor there. And and uh, now we'll move bling, on. Bling 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 bling. The the probably the best game that you'll see in this week. That will most likely be the game of the week. Oh, not even most likely. This is probably the best game that I've seen in the season to this point. The Warriors. We've drawn so much attention to them. I don't know if we have too many uh, Warrior fans, though the Warriors, they've added Sanchez over the offseason. They have Riley, who is just awesome out there in special teams. He mm -hmm. got the record for seven field goal, uh, field goal completions uh, or completed field goals in a game. And those were the two holes that they had starting in 2011. They figured out both of those. They made it into the Super Bowl both times regardless. And now they are 4-0, facing off against the 3-0 Sharks. Um, I believe they didn't play this past week. And uh, as weird as it sounds, HDT Sun, one, two, three. Watch out for this game because the Sharks are actually the Waves' rival 
as they are in our, uh, the waiver in Orlando and the Sharks. Pretty good team are in Miami, starting off with the 3-0 season, facing off against the Warriors. Should be a great game, and the Sharks also have home field advantage. You want to note that, too. Yes, definitely. Definitely a game that I definitely want to watch, commentate over. It'll be fun. I expect it to be a definitely high-scoring game, as both offenses are high-charged going into this one. And uh, we'll move on here. Juniper's Crocodiles, uh, they're both uh, 500, 2-2 two and two there. See who can get over 500. All right, see so who can get over 500, and that's, I mean, that's probably a good game, but it's nothing compared to this one that we were talking about yeah, before. Yeah, seriously. And uh, there you see Atomic and Boars. Uh, the Boars, they just died. They lost their undefeated title as they're 3-1 and one now, going against the uh, Atomic here. Yeah, and this is a similar case to before, as they were facing off against the Nobles, who were 0-3. This should be an easy game, though. I mean, they just lost against the Nobles, so can they pick one up against the Atomic? That is the question of the day. <laughs> yeah, definitely a question there that the Boars have to ask themselves. They definitely got to study the Atomic because you never know. The Atomics, they, they're, they're a little sneaky there. You saw they got a win. And so we'll see about that. And there you have the Memphis Owls, Richmond Pioneers, 2-2 two and two to 1-3. and three. That should be a, uh, I guess I'll call it an interesting game. Uh, Pioneers hoping to get their second win on this season there. So they could be a little bit closer to 500. And there you see the Wave trying to keep their undefeated record g going against the uh, Suns, who are 2-1. and one. So that's definitely a good game for the Wave. Wave, uh, definitely, I'd say if they win this game, uh, they, um, they're, they're looking pretty much in shape for the playoffs. I know it's a little early to say that, but I mean... They they've been doing great as of right now. They keep, beat the uh, Lions. Keep so. in mind though, they uh, the Suns are the home team, and I would say that the Suns definitely are a sleeper team, similar to the Sky Rays. I mean, they did not play last week, so I mean, you never know. This uh, the Suns could definitely surprise you in this game, and maybe the uh, the Wave will be caught off guard, and maybe they will get their first loss. Though we'll see how that one plays out. That should be a pretty good one. Yes, it definitely uh, will be a good game that we will probably talk about in uh, the week. Five uh, post uh, week show, and here you see the stars who are yet to get a win against the uh, pit bulls who are two and two. And uh, if I were you, Josh, I'd want the stars to win. Uh, could you guess why? I want them to lose. Good draft pick, right? No, well, you could. Uh, if you're a stars fan, you definitely want them to lose. But in your case, oh yes, as uh, as a Junipers fan, I would definitely want them to uh, get a win here, and I would say solely for the draft. And, I mean, the Junipers, they do have a pretty good draft pick this year. They were 7-9, as I mentioned earlier. And the Stars, I'm not too sure how they did last year. Though, after a dismal start, it doesn't look like they'll make it into the playoffs unless they pretty much have a stellar rest of the season. So, hopefully they can uh, maybe get 500 record and maybe get an average draft pick next season. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Pitbulls, they are in the uh, Junipers division. So, if the Stars uh, help out the Junipers a little bit and uh, beat the Pitbulls, that's definitely a good situation for the Junipers right there. Definitely. Uh, so, here we have Phoenix and Meteors. Phoenix 1 and 2 and the Meteors 2 and 2. And the uh, Boise Spies and the Las Vegas Bulldogs 1 and 3, 2 and 2. And here we have the... Uh, I'd say I'm a little disappointed in the Lions 2-2 two two against the uh, Lansing Vipers who are yet to get a win, so yeah, the Lions I, should win this game. I gotta say, this is probably, to this point of the season, probably one of the most critical games for the Lions. If they lose this game, it really just shifts their momentum. They have been on a little bit of a slide lately, and I mean, they were 2-1, and one. that was a pretty tough loss. They bounced back and then they lost another game. If they lose this one... They're below 500, and they would lose to an 0-4 Vipers team away, though. So that uh, that's not helping them too much. Though if they lose this one, total shift in momentum, and that will not help them at all. And that will definitely shift the fans' uh, state of mind also a little bit. Yeah, definitely, because they you got to remember, they are in the same division as the Wave. So if they lose this, it's going to be tough for them to catch up, and then they're going to have to start thinking about fighting for a wild card spot rather than winning that division title. Yeah. And uh, that actually is the last game of the week uh, for Week 5. So, as we uh, kept emphasizing before, this is the game you're most likely going to see, Warrior Sharks. That is a game I am extremely excited for, as well as Josh is. Yeah, that should definitely be a really great one to watch. And hopefully you guys are as excited as we are to see this one uh, go on. Yes, definitely. So, uh, seeing these things and uh, having our fun conversation, uh, we're going to move on to the weekly awards that is the players of the week 
and we'll take a look and see who got it. And there you see, uh, in the AFC, we have both uh, people on the Owls. So the Owls had a good game this uh, good game this week, apparently. As uh, whoops, sorry about that. As you uh, see there, that um, Terrell Grander had three touchdown catches, and uh, Miles had six tackles for three sacks. Yeah, I'm honestly a little bit surprised. I don't remember that. I mean, the Owls had a pretty good game, though. Uh, just like last time, I mean, individual performances don't always reflect directly on the the whole entire game. I mean, although although they do have a direct, you know, they do have a pretty big impact. I mean, we were surprised last time. I mean, here you see another surprise, uh, surprising set of players, both on the Owls, offensive and defensive. Mm-hmm. Definitely a surprise to me. Maybe the Owls can keep this up. But anyway, we'll move to Tyler Turner. Who has five touchdown? Uh, who has five <laughs> touchdown passes here, and it, he ties the record for the most uh, again. <laughs> yeah, passing touchdowns, and uh, he is on the Warriors. So Warriors definitely uh, hot. You see there. Yeah, that's definitely going to help them a lot uh, in this upcoming game against the Sharks, and really, uh, he could definitely help them out in this upcoming game. I would say. Yes, definitely, and you see Levante Kane there on the uh, Nobles with two picks and uh, three tackles along with that. So um, we'll move on now to uh, the uh, league leaders uh, in the league, and uh, well, let me just find it first. There we go. Stats help. Wait, no, that's not okay. No, let's just do standings. While I we're guess here. we're doing standings while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the wrong button, but there you see Solomon Bores no longer undefeated, three and one. Buffaloes two and two, baboons one and two, and rhinos one and three. I'm actually yeah, a little surprised about that. Yeah, I'm gotta say for the boars, that's actually uh, although they did lose their undefeated record, they aren't in the best of divisions. So at least that's a bright spot for them. Yes, definitely uh, have a pretty easy division for them unless the rhinos uh, step up their game and catch up to them. Yeah, it seems like they play a good game, just uh, not showing it as the end result. Yeah. I uh, definitely agree with Josh on that. And we'll move on here. Miami Sharks undefeated facing the Warriors that we keep on mentioning. And uh, they they are 3-0, and of course. And Kansas City Cherokees 2-2 two and two, along with the Memphis Owls, who are 2-2. Two and two. and uh, there you see their last game. They won 24-3, so that was a dominant win there. That's how they got both their uh, player of the week. Um, for AFC uh, offensive and defensive, so those were two major factors put into that game, definitely. There you see low scoring for the other team, and they still scored a fair share, 24 points. And uh, lucky for them, they're facing the uh, Richmond Pioneers next week, so that's uh, looking en route to another win. Uh, you never know, though. Pioneers did snatch a win, uh, I believe it was in either week two, I think it is. So, I mean, you never know. Pioneers can surprise you, though. Definitely not a great team. Yeah, and they. Speaking of them, they are one and three. They are in the same division, so we'll see how that game turns out. And we'll move to AFC East. There you see. Uh, two, every, and two, two, every, and two, two and two, two and two, two and two, two and two. Everyone's two and two, so this division looks pretty. Up for grabs. Yeah, close there. Uh, you see the Junipers, Crocs, and uh, Pitbulls all got a win, but Killer Bees lost. So. Yeah, definitely. This is going to be one of the divisions that you really got to watch out for. I mean. Any of these teams can just come out in front and just take the division, just like that. Mm -hmm. The Junipers have potential. They're bouncing back after a subpar season. Killer Bees definitely have the potential. Crocodiles, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out. Same thing for the Pitbulls. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like here that um, based on the other teams in this uh, conference, that if you uh, win the division, like if you don't win the division, you most likely won't make the playoffs because those wild cards, wild card spots, that is, will be filled up. So all these teams here in this division, they're hoping to win it. But we'll see what happens. <clears throat> and we have here Iowa Suns 2-1 and one, leading their division and the Flame half a game back 2-2. Two and two, And the Fresno Travelers 1-3 and three, and the Condors yet to get a win. I really just want to see him win for B-Wildcat too. I mean, that would be a good win for all the fans. And I know he is one, so 0-4. Just show a bright spot. It would be really nice if they did at home also. Yes, definitely uh, would... <laughs> Make all the uh, Condor fans uh, at least a little bit more happy than they, you know, could be. <laughs> so uh, NFC North here, we got the uh, Nobles and the Sky Rays, both three and one here. Yeah, you know what, the Nobles. I'm actually a little bit surprised at them. I mean, they are three and one, but I mean, that one loss. I mean, like uh, what we were talking about last post game show with the Lions. I mean, their one loss is different from this one loss. I know that the Lions now have another loss though. The Lions had that one loss. It was from three points. It was from a field goal in overtime. 
This one loss was from a 48-3 SmackDown um, against a good Wave team. Uh, yeah, against a good Wave team, definitely. Wave still on a hot streak, on a tear. And, uh, and there you see the Anaconda and the Atomic aren't exactly on a tear, as you see the Anaconda yeah. lost two Anaconda, uh, I'm actually a little disappointed in Anaconda. I thought that they would have a little better uh, start, but you can see there, 1-3, and three, not a great start. Yeah, definitely not a great start. They need to pick it up if they want to have a chance to make the playoffs. And here we see NFC South, the Electington Demons. Wow, they're uh, they're undefeated. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't want to call them a sneaky team because we did draw some attention to them. Though I would say that the few teams that I would definitely want to point out, the Demons, maybe the Sky Rays, the Wave, and the Warriors are definitely at the top also. Mm -hmm. Those teams you got to definitely watch out for. Uh, they are... In the uh, running two win of this division, unless they get a little bit of heat from the Bulldogs and Meteors, who are two and two, and the Stars, I, in my opinion, they don't have to worry about them too much. <laughs> They're yeah. just working on getting a good draft pick. Yeah, pretty much working on that. And here we have NFC East, Wave still on top, yet to have a loss. Watch out for the Shamrocks, though. I wouldn't be surprised if they sneak up. Shamrocks definitely a solid team that could uh, definitely show some dominance later on in the season. Maybe sneak up on the Wave. I mean, hey, the Wave lose a game and the Shamrocks win a game. Guess what? Tied at the top. Yes, and they are facing the Condor uh, this week coming up, actually. So, you know, that that's I'm, I guess I could say that's an easy win, I guess. But, you know, hey, anything possible. And then the Lions, they're definitely a team that could easily sneak up. They've just been on a cold streak lately. I mean, you never know. In the later stretch of the season, similar to the Shamrocks, they could easily just sneak up on them. Just win a few games, the, sh uh, the Wave lose a couple games. The Lions could definitely be in the running really quickly. Yes, definitely. As you see, they are facing a team in their division, the Vipers, who are yet to get a win. Yeah, definitely should be a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Lions detrimental for them to win that one, as we were talking about before. Yeah. And here you see Little Rock Warriors. Uh, they are undefeated. Yep. And uh, they're facing the Sharks, as we keep on saying. That's going to be a great game. Hope you watch that one. Yeah, we got to get someone to write an article for that. Yeah, if definitely. Not, I'll write it. <laughs> yeah, we'll take the white write it ourselves. <laughs> and the uh, Springfield Blazers there, 3-1, and one, and Phoenix and Spies 1-2 uh, and 1-3, and and respectively. So that will uh, sum up the standings. But I will quickly look just to see... As if the playoffs started right now, who would make it? There you see Sharks, Boars, Suns, Junipers, Cherokees, and Flame. And the hunt would be Buffaloes and Owls and uh, a lot of other teams there. And NFC, we'll just quickly look at that. We have Wave, Warriors, Demons, uh, Nobles, Shamrocks, Blazers. In the hunt would be Sky Rays and Bulldogs and Meteors. And uh, Lions uh, fall behind a little bit, number 10 in their conference. So uh, that will bring an end to standings, and we'll just go to the Stat Hub and see who's uh, in the, the lead there, as so we can see who's dominating a little bit. And we'll go to passing, and we'll see here that P.J. James is in the lead in the quarterback rating still, a 111.6. Yeah, and that'll definitely uh, be a dominant factor in this upcoming game against the Warriors. If he's good in this game... It could be a really close one, though. If he's just a little bit off, then that Warriors defense could just get all over him. And guess what? Game over. Yes, definitely. Game over for the Sharks. And there you see uh, Clarence Barnes, who is uh, in the league for total passing yards. He's on the Meteors, actually. Yeah, you may remember that he was uh, the AFC offensive player, um, or NFC. I don't know what uh, conference exactly, though. He was offensive player of the week uh, last week, so that's probably one of the contributions to him being in the lead yes definitely as you see he has eight touchdowns but the lead leader is oh my goodness dane smith is hurt wow you know this has shocked me i didn't know he was hurt uh he has he's in the league uh for lead lead for touchdowns he has 10 touchdowns and four interceptions but he's uh well he's hurt let's check this out yeah we gotta this check is this out pretty here. major the best quarterback in the league injured alert 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 lions fans Yes, yeah, seriously. Maybe this is why they are uh, definitely on a little bit of a losing streak right now. Uh, let's see. What is he injured with? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong thing there. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry, see. this is probably gonna be a little bit of a longer episode. This is a uh, pretty is critical. Pretty, yeah, pretty injury. important news there. Uh, let's take a look and see with the Lions, and he's uh, only gonna be hurt for two weeks. Not okay, all right. too bad. He's uh, dislocated that's, ankle though. That's why. That's why that is <laughs> so detrimental to yeah. the Lions. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely wanna, uh, if you don't mind. Hopefully you don't. I'm gonna check it anyway. I wanna see for the Lions who's gonna be playing in their stead because they are facing the Vipers. But since Dane Smith is not going to be starting, who is? Zachary Mills. Ah, uh, that's not too good there. All right, well, that's really significant for them, so not good. As you see there, he played a little bit um, in the year so far. He has one touchdown, uh, good rating, but that's <laughs> He has he... more touchdowns than the whole entire fort with Condor, <laughs> uh, which was the former the team that I used to play on. Yeah, All right, so let's uh, move back to the stats. Um, league leaders, and uh, sorry about that. That was uh, pretty critical news, though, for Lions, um, especially for everyone else in the division, the wave in their division. Critical news for HDT Sun, one, two, three. Yes. Crazy stuff. I say that the wave definitely getting the most action. Uh, you see the Sharks playing a critical game. You see that the Lions with a critical injury. This is mm -hmm. uh, pretty critical stuff for them. Yes, the uh, NFC East um, co uh, division, that is, Definitely a very uh, getting a lot of news going on for them. But you see the Sharks are in that division as well, so definitely a lot of news going on for them. And now we'll move on to interceptions. Brendan Ziegler, seven of them, with still no touchdowns. And Winter also is tied with him for interceptions, so he's not by himself, but he is cold, so double O, that's your team, so sorry about that. Though uh, hopefully he can get back up uh, <coughs> maybe on a hot streak, or at least get off the cold streak and... Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why the Killer Bees haven't been doing so uh, so hot lately. Yeah, they are 2-2, two and two, but at least Damon Winter has uh, touchdowns on his back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, better than uh, Ziegler. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, here we have the most yards, not negative 4. Davon Randolph is still in the lead, 520 yards, uh, and the uh, that is the biggest average, uh, or largest average, uh, why am I, greatest, whatever. All right, 8.4 for Dion Charles. And yeah, by a lot, actually. That yeah. was 8.4 compared to, like, high fours, like you see here. Mm, yeah, 5.7. 5. 5. Yeah. Wow, he's definitely in the running there. Maybe the best halfback in the league. We'll check that as those things become later available in the yeah, year. Don't be surprised by the Suns. I mean, I think that's uh, who the Wave are facing off against, trying to break their winning streak. Mm -hmm. And here you see the Boars, Elliot Harrington. That's probably... He's probably can, Contribution, uh, that's not a word. You know what I mean for the boys. Is a word. <laughs> oh, it is a word? Okay. Yeah. And then you know. also have Randolph, who's also tied with him. Mm hmm. Uh, for Representing the, most the demons. And there you see Kadarius Sanchez for the uh, for the Warriors there. With big the there with big contributing sense. factor yeah. for uh, this upcoming game of the week. Definitely. Well, want him to see, want to see him, you know, play his hardest for his team. Probably wants to play the best he can. And there you see. Brandon Brown, who is behind uh, behind Dane Smith, is quarterback. Well, at least not at least before this week, as Dane Smith got hurt. Uh, but he has thirty catches this year, so that's good for him. And he's also hot, so that could also uh, try to help them out at least with their sixty-six overall uh, current quarterback with the significant injury of uh, Smith. Yes, definitely. And uh, here you see most yards is Isaac Clements with one hundred sixty-two. And not much competition with that, though. Brandon Brown, you know, Brandon Brown's Brandon Brown. He's an upcoming star. They're all young, so I could say that he's an upcoming star. That definitely will be good, and he's almost about in his prime right now. And uh, here you see Zanil Gates has uh, five touchdowns uh, catches on the year, and uh, he's on the wave, so that would make sense. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the blocking. And there you see Garrick Duncan has eight Pancake sacks with, uh, pancake blocks, that is, with giving up three sacks. So that's a good ratio for him. Yeah, that's at least one of the bright spots for the Anaconda. Definitely don't shed uh, too much light on them. They're not, Anaconda, not one of the terrible teams, but they're not one of the great teams. They're just kind of there, and uh, there you see one of the bright spots in Duncan helping them on the defensive side of things. Or the, the offensive side. Um, yeah, the my offensive. <laughs> offensive side, yeah, he's blocking the uh, quarterback there with the, uh, you know, Helping him to not get sacks, but anyone will move the sacks, and, well, the Condor, uh, that doesn't help him either. <laughs> He's giving up six sacks, so the quarterback can't throw, and he can't get the throw off because he's under so much pressure. 
So that's not good for him. And now we'll move to tackles. Uh, Adrian Hobby has the most tackles in the league with 49, but closely under is Brian Gab uh, Cabrella. Can you help me out with this, Josh? Carhala. Yeah, Carhala with <laughs> 48. And uh, Sacks in the lead is Jaquan Sargent with uh, 5. So that's definitely good uh, for him. And Eric and Riley, that's my guy right there. <laughs> you like him, huh? Yeah, I definitely see him being a huge factor in the Warriors uh, season in addition to the upcoming game against the Sharks, definitely. Mm -hmm. I definitely uh, expect him to kick at least one field goal. Uh, he doesn't miss a lot of them. He missed two this year, but he has had a lot of attempts. He is in the lead for that, too. And there you see he's made 11 of those. And now we'll move to punting. And there you see uh, Caleb Patton has the most punts. And uh, I don't think he has the most yards. Yeah, Colin Honeycutt still does with... Uh, over 2,000 of them. Yeah, by a significant amount, too. Yeah, about 200 points from uh, Josh Hedgepeth, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good with names, if you didn't know that by now. Uh, kick returning, anything special? Uh, still uh, one kick return there for uh, this guy, Shuj Drez Dixon and uh, Sean Reese. So, and the leader in yards is Sean Justi uh, Justice on your team, the uh, Junipers. Yeah, definitely want to see that. By, uh, that's actually by a decent amount, too. Uh, six yards, yeah. Uh, that 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 definitely is a lot for kick returning because it's hard to get those kick returning yards. A good observation there. And uh, punt returning, you see, uh, still Doug Douglas Lawrence has two, and as I keep saying, that is a Pro Bowl making thing right in itself. You could get two uh, punt return touchdowns and you're in. It's not really common. Yeah. Um, so that will sum up that, and I believe I covered everything. So uh, great talking with you again, Josh. Yeah, uh, sorry if this episode went on uh, longer than uh, we wanted to, uh, but that injury definitely was really significant. Thank you if you uh, stick through the whole thing and uh, make sure probably by the time post-week, maybe five, probably not, though, um, but definitely by six or seven, make sure you give us your Skype, and you can definitely join in on this. And we could even do a, a try commentary. I guess you'd call it. It would be me, Josh, and uh, whoever, uh, whoever wants to do it with us. So I really enjoyed doing this again. Good experience, and I definitely think it makes it a little more enjoyable for you guys. Even though these episodes uh, are definitely significantly longer than normal, I think it does make it more enjoyable. So make sure you leave your feedback for us. Yes, definitely. I want to see what you guys' thoughts about the season uh, and uh, what you guys think will happen. Some predictions. Of course, you could do that. On our Twitter account, I've got to keep up with that. I haven't been doing great with that, but I will try my best to keep up yes, with that. Yes, and it's almost getting to that part of the season. You can make some decisions for us with trades, head coaches, etc. Whatever you guys want to do. Remember, this is a very interactive series. Any suggestions you want us to do? If you want us to maybe do re uh, league leaders every other episode or something to shorten the episodes, whatever you guys want, let us know. We love your feedback, and whatever we can do to make the episodes better, we'll do it. Yes, definitely. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, watching this, and uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll see you on the uh, pregame, I guess this is uh, 6. Yeah, pregame pre 6. So uh, thanks for watching this, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.